after my last video, I realized, wait a minute, I'm missing a bridge. So this video, I'm going to be making a bridge. The program that I'm using is called Autodesk Maya. I'm just using this because I've been using this for a long time. Working in that low poly modeling style that I've chosen for this game. And the main idea here is this is a unlit game. The nice benefit about unlit is that I don't have to worry about lighting. But also the challenge is that I don't have to worry about lighting. How do you make a visually interesting art style when there is not the extra layer of visual interest of having lights? And in this case, my main approach to making a unlit asset look good is making sure that when there's surface change, think of like one side here and the other side here, I make sure that the color is not the same. That way you can visually tell when the surface direction changes. And that philosophy always holds true for most things that I create. And so that's one, surface contrast. Then there's also faking the light. So where there is like ambient occlusion or shadow, I might just stylistically add floating geometry there. And let's say it's like a light brown area and I wanted to make it look like it has ambient occlusion. I'll just add a sliver of geometry and I'll make that slightly darker. And that's how I would get to the crevices and give some sense of fake fall off. That's the approach that I'm doing with this bridge. And another thing that I'm doing for myself is adding some strips around the edges to give like a edge highlight effect. In the end, I think this is working for me now. I'm bringing it into the game here and I'm placing it into the game just to make sure that it fits the stylistic vision. Also, I wanna make sure that the nav mesh can be generated properly in order to get my characters going over the bridge. So after that, I realized that I really need to clean up this folder. I work very iteratively. This has its own strengths, but it also has its own weaknesses. I like working iteratively, so it works for me, but there is a time where I need to slow down and clean up my project. Right now, I have so many folders in my project that were from prior testing. And I'm just showing you this because um, I think it's a very important part of development. When I start cleaning a project, it's a very good sign. That means I have clarity that the ambiguity that existed that caused me to keep every file because I don't know if I'm going to need it later. After I finished cleaning my folder, I decided that I need to add some new props. My strength is in my visual artistic background. And one thing that I always remind myself is my motivations and my ability to stay motivated is very correlated to how excited I am to work on the project. And one way that I do that for myself personally is make sure that the one area that is my strength is the art. So I need to make sure that I have enough visual interest to keep myself engaged in the project. So an easy way for me to do that right now is just add a few more props to add visual interest. And this is not just for the viewer, but it's also for me. I need to be pumped up while I'm working on this project. So here I am adding some bushes and some rocks. For the bushes, I've decided for now, just we're gonna do two, two bushes. And for the rocks, we're just gonna do two rocks. The style, again, super simple. And the rocks are a duplicate of the bush. I'm just using gradients. I'm finding myself liking gradients more than the actual swatches that I've been using uh, in my texture. And I think going forward, I might just start using, I mean, these are swatches that are long and then there's a gradient in them. I'm really digging that approach to texturing because it gives me a lot more flexibility to go down the gradient to get the exact color contrast highlight that I need. The principles are very basic, similar to what I covered with the bridge. In respect to this specific bush and rock asset, since I'm reusing a lot, I wanna make sure that as I'm creating these, I pay very close attention to not making it look super repeatable. It just takes a few minutes of my time to break up some of the repetition where possible. 
but it has the extra win making the assets way more reusable. So I can rotate it and just get different looks around the map if I want that. So that's the main thing. Create simplified bushes, rocks. Don't make them look too repetitive. Get some interesting colors. Make sure that the colors work well with my current floor colors and environment color. I don't want to use the exact same color of the grass on top of the bush because then they'll get lost. And also the, the color I use for my rocks, it needs to fit with my current color palette. Now, again, the super nice thing about using Unlit is that my colors are very predictable from my 3D modeling package of choice versus importing it into Unity. I don't have to worry about mismatch between lighting. So it's it has an added benefit of being way easier to art direct. When I was choosing whether to go with unlit or lit, it was a very clear choice for me because I just really want to create something that looks aesthetically good, but not get too caught up on like technical uh, details. Like you've seen my other tutorials on this channel. It's very lighting focused. So it's not that I don't know how to light. I, I'm very comfortable with lighting. It's just that sometimes having lights in your game doesn't necessarily make it better or uh, visually better, right? Like fancier graphics doesn't mean better art. My focus on this project is just making it simple enough for me to manage my time daily. I might get two hours of work if I'm lucky. So time is very limited for me. And one thing that I like about using this kind of art style, it really frees me up to make um, simple but aesthetically pleasing game art without getting bogged down with super fancy stuff like lighting. And lighting is very complicated. Um, I know how to do it. That doesn't necessarily mean I want to do it for months on end when I'm polishing. So keep that in mind when you're designing your game. It is really nice to not have to worry about lighting. So if you're a new developer creating a new game in Unity, I strongly recommend seeing if going with an unlit style would fit your uh, goals for the kind of game you're making. Obviously, if you're trying to make some fancy game with fancy graphics, then keep the, the light. But sometimes it's unnecessary. So here, I also want to make dirt patches. One thing in my game is the floor is a bit repetitive. I'm using the same pattern on the tiling floor. And one thing that I realized is if I create some dirt patch props, I can, it, those props, dirt patches can help me break up the super repetitive patterns that you can see on my floor. And it adds a really nice visual interest. Right now, I only have two dirt patches. But I'm pretty sure in the future, I'll be adding a lot more. And yeah, the main thing is just making sure the, the little square tile things in my dirt patch, they're not super repetitive. And here I'm going into my map and decorating it. And this is a great time for me just to test out whether the props that I made work with my map. I'm going through, I'm decorating the map. Uh, I'm creating some just general... I'm going with vibes here. I, I've been making art for a long time. So it's like, what does look good? I don't know. Like I just move a tree here and ask my brain, do I like it? And it's like a thumbs up. Okay, I keep it. It's just like a flow state. For trees, I like to have like a ramp, uh, a fall off. So as you start the cluster, you go with starting like a small tree and it just kind of gradually increases in size to bigger trees and there's a fall off. So your cluster gets this nice, fall off it is my guess is it just feels more natural but i don't know if it's realistic i'm just going off with with what feels right to me and yeah yeah maybe someone else could do a better job of explaining of uh explaining what is good visual design but with me as i uh this is not like a commentary on vibe coding but when i'm making art i'm just going with like feeling and oftentimes, I don't have much practice of explaining it. So that's just the, the artist in me just kind of kicking in. I'm moving on to attack animation. And this is the part that I found quite fascinating. So in the beginning, I knew that I wanted for my attack, for my modular attack that I'm generating through a script, 
I want it to stretch along the Z axis. And that's basically the forward direction for my character. So if you notice here, when I grab the Z handle and I stretch it, it stretches both the head and the tail, or just, it's the whole body, right? But it's grabbing the tail too. And it kind of looks a little weird to just stretch the character like that. And I knew that for the attack, the assumption here is that the character is attacking with the, the mouth or the head or head butting. The idea I wanted was to be able to control a fall off that when I stretch it, the vertices that are closer to the mouth or the head portion of the character are more affected by my stretch than the vertices that are behind the character, like the tip of the tail. Like that would be nice if I have control to not have the tail be stretched while I stretch it out in the script. So with that in mind, in Maya, here's a visual representation of this. If I soft select all the vertices starting from the head and to somewhere around the mid of the body and then move my pivot of my scaling to that the core of the character and then grab the Z axis handle. And you notice that when I do this, it has a nicer fall off where most of the stretch happens closer to the head area. And that's what I've described to Gemini. So to clarify for you, the viewer, I didn't program anything. I don't even read the code that gets outputted from these LLMs. I verify that it does what I want by bringing it into Unity and just applying it and seeing if it does what I want. But my thing is, is I am not reading it. I can, I can read code. Most of the stuff that's outputted by these LLMs are a little bit too sophisticated for me, but I'm sure with time I can read it. But for my purposes, I'm just like, here's what I want. I'll test it out in Unity. In this case, what I described to you that I wanted for the attack is what I put into Gemini. It gave me a script. The script, the way it's set up is a little goofy. But in the end, um, it does what I wanted it to, but it does it with a sphere, but that's fine. So the script gave me a sphere, you have a dome, and I can move this around anywhere around the character, and I can adjust the scale of this dome. The closer you are to the center of the sphere, the more affected you are by the squash and stretch, or in this case, it's actually just the stretch. So that is the fall off. If you want 100% weight of the stretch, you would go closer to the center of the sphere. And the further away you are from the center, the more fall off you get. And that, in essence, gave me exactly what I wanted in my script. And um, it's not how I would have done it, but you know what? I don't care how you do it, so long as I visually get the result that I want. And that's my. Um, workflow when I'm designing these scripts. I'm not writing it. I'm not programming it. Most of it I came and read, right? But that doesn't matter so far. We'll see. This is likely going to get me in trouble later down the line, hopefully not too soon. But this is the kind of workflow that I am testing here in this devlog. It's not, hey, can I spend two years programming or getting better at programming? It's like, no. I'm hoping that I can just skate by with my art ability and, and have the LLMs fill in the gaps, right? And I think if you're a developer, same thing goes for you, right? There are LLMs that can generate the art, whereas before it's like, good luck trying to paint some of those fancy images, right? I'm not saying this is perfect. I'm not saying this is a good workflow, but it is a workflow that I feel like it is an interesting one that in the future, it would be a real workflow. If it's not now, right? Um, there aren't too many people trying to do stuff like this, right? It's a it's a weird way to work. And if people are like, "Oh, that's like a really cool programming script," did you do it? I'm like, "No, I didn't do it." There, there's less of a pride, right? Because at the end, I'm just trying to get a game to work, and it's not as cool for me personally. If someone told, if I looked at somebody like, "Hey, that, that's a really awesome game you made," and they tell me they didn't program any of it, I, I, it just doesn't have the same expectations for me. But I am 
putting my pride aside to see if I can make a game with this approach. And it could be that I'm in devlog 10. And I'm just like, look, this was a terrible idea. Don't watch any of my videos, right? But it is a thing that excited me to make these videos. And we'll see how long that goes. But whatever happens, I'll learn something from it. Um, and I think that's the part, that's my takeaway so that it's not wasted time. Um, yeah. So that's how I got my attack. So with my attack animation, I've already made the jump for the movement animation. Now I've decorated my map and I want to see all of my different color versions of my dinosaur. I want to see them path in the map just so I can get a, like a vibe check. Like, does it look good? Am I excited? Um, things are working. Does it, uh, how's the motion, all that other stuff. So that's what you're seeing here. It's me just... Here's all the characters, and here they are pathing through a node system. All I've done was like, here's a node one, node two, node three. And the script just goes through and just points each character to each node. Um, they all just travel along this pathing. And they all have a rigid body, so they'll collide together and bump and have interesting interactions. I'm not sure if that's going to cause problems later on, but you know, sometimes um, if they bump a little too much, they'll fall through the world. Um, I have ways to fix that later, but that's a problem to be resolved for another video. So yeah, here it is. Um, I feel like this is a good place for me to remind myself that, all right, I've gotten this far in this devlog working in my natural workflow, which is iterative. There isn't too much planning. I'm just really going based off of experience. While that does work for me professionally, I do have a hunch that now it's time to make it like a proper devlog where I have like, hey, look at here's all my board. Here's my design. Here's my future plans. Here's all the features that are, you know, just ticketed one by one. I have none of that. So I'm just kind of winging it. But this is the way I work and it's probably terrible, but it works for me. But I do feel like looking at this now, it is time for me to perhaps adopt some of that approach now, just so I know where I'm going. It looks like LNMs fill enough of the gap that I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I think I can make a real game. But this is like my kryptonite. I need to start getting heavy in planning and details and design and user experience and all that other stuff, just so that I know which features are worthy to be prioritized up for me to work on them. That would make it more like a regular devlog because I've seen some devlogs where it's just like devlog one and it's just like 20 pages of plans. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's, a, lot of, that's a lot of thoughtful, careful consideration for uh, the future of the game. And it, it, it does look a little more serious, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, um, hopefully. Now, if the, vex if the next video comes in and you're just like, hey, where's the, all the design? Then something went wrong, right? But I'm going off of hunches. I think that's the next place for me to focus on. And I might just do that in a few days and just realize I was completely wrong. And, uh, and then you'll see my dev next devlog is just me making more art. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, but the next focus is on, okay, I'm going to figure out the design, maybe put some temporary UI in there just to get an idea of what it's going to look like um, instead of just uh, going based on pure iteration and yeah, make it a real game. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. Bye.